welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, bang on time, Roy has a fox problem that's regular as clockwork. We have more Top Gun Dog training tips brought to you by the experts from Skinner's Pet Foods. First, it's a red letter day on Corvids with the aptly named legend in his own crow hide, Andy Crow. never managed to have a good day on crows with the crow, but today the sun is shining in Crowsville and there's plenty of corvids in the air. As normal, Andy has had his beady eye on the flight lines and what these birds are up to. He's seen the numbers build over the past week and today is the day to put all that prep to the test. Just over the back of this, this shore we've got here, he's just cut about 50 acres of um, silage and he's got quite a lot of uh, crows and jackdaws going on there, so I'm gonna stick a few crow decoys out and see if I can decoy a few of those in for something to do this afternoon. They tend to follow this part, this uh, hedge line down and make for the fields over the back there, so the plan is to hopefully get under them and, and shoot a few of them, so. They're not eating the grass, are they? How come they're, no, they're, they're all, interesting in the silage? Uh, they're after the leather jackets, a lot of leather jackets and any earthworms they can get, but it's mainly leather jackets they're after. Some people have a problem with shooting jackdaws, but like many arable farmers, Andy sees the damage they do in their never-ending quest for grubs. We're putting their corn in and it's so slow getting going and the crows are just finding the row and, they're just, and the jackdaws and they're just going up and there's quite a few farmers around here. They've had to re-drill where the jackdaws have uh, just been down the rows and dug up the seeds. So, um, but it's just a, well, hopefully it's a way of getting a few of them. With Corvids being so cunning, we have to outcrow the crow. Andy has to have his hide more hidden than a hide in hiding. I'll, I'll push my way back into the trees there. I'm not gonna get, I'm trying to keep it as closed in as possible. So I've got, I can shoot out through here and I can shoot up through there. And I don't want the crows coming over from behind and seeing me, so I wanna have a bit of a canopy over, over the back of me as well. They've got such good eyesight, they really have. The old cameraman's gonna have to keep down out of the way a bit today, aren't he? The decoys are also important. Crows, rooks and jackdaws are super sensitive to seeing their own kind in trouble or looking even a bit crumpled. Fallen birds and a pattern looking less than natural will destroy your chances. Sometimes crows and jackdaws come in better than what pigeons do, so, but everything has to be right. Full-bodied crow decoys are the best uh, and they want to be flock coated as well. Right, like you look at them, they look so real. They want to sent me down some crows as well. They just want to look lifelike. If you watch a flock of crows, one minute they're, they're all together and then there's a gap. So I've left them a bit sparse here and I've put them a bit tighter over there. Just try and make them look as natural as possible. I'll get a dozen, twenty of these out there and get in hide and see what happens. Having set out the shop, it's time to see if we can attract some customers with our window dressing. Incredibly, all Andy's wrecking has paid off and the birds start decoying straight away. Be a good day. This is not really something we filmed before. The closest we've had to a good day on the crows was with Mr Digweed. Knowing that the fallen birds will definitely interrupt our flow, Crow heads out to clean up the pattern and grab the odd runner. Andy always does the legwork on Crow days, leaving the dog at home as they can get hurt. I don't like bringing the dogs out in these because they pet the dogs, so that's the reason I, I'm doing the running and the dogs are back in the run in the, in the call and I'm doing the running. So hottest day of the year and, and I'm chasing jackdaws and crows around the field. I suppose the answer to it is kill everything you shoot at. I'm not that good. It's so satisfying when a plan comes together and we can't quite believe how well it's going. The last time we tried crow shooting, we got half a dozen on a bitterly cold day six months ago. Oh, we're doing quite well. 
summer decoying, but we're getting some nice long shots, which is quite nice. I think we're, uh, I'll be disappointed if we're not over 100 already. Uh, a few droppers all around, but we've retrieved most of them. I just don't know how long, much longer they keep coming for. So, just like they keep coming. Nice to make 120, 130. That'll be your best day, would it? It will be at least, yeah. Today, it's sunny, hot, the crows are flooding in, and Andy is shooting like a god with the Lincoln over and under, even under the scrutiny of Chromo. With the sunshine, you can even see the glint of the game ball shot as it leaves the gun. These birds seem to be much stronger than a pigeon, so you need the extra knockdown power of a quality okay. cartridge. Yes, got a pigeon. The sky is clear for a moment, so it's time for us to do another clear up. Andy throws in an A1 decoys flapper to see if that makes any difference. Yeah, yeah I just put a flapper out um, on him. This one that A1 has sent me to try out. Now, here comes one. You want it, David? Watch your head. The birds are so keen today, they're even coming in when Andy's out front. We start shooting at half past two and we pack up about seven o'clock. It was going to be earlier, but time just flies when there's the remotest chance of that one last bird. And he does some calculating and it's his best day ever on the crows. More than 200 birds, double his previous best. No, it's been a great afternoon. Yeah, they come down his head and off. I hope they would go into this field and they did decoy quite well. Um, but yeah, this the best day I've had, so yeah, it's been a good afternoon. Had some not, nice shots, real high stuff coming over, and some decoy well. So, and uh, I think all the young birds that the young birds that we've saved by shooting these, because they they do eat a lot of lot of eggs and chicks this time of year. Even the jackdaws do. People underestimate the damage that jackdaws do. It's worked really well, so we've had a great day. A red letter day on the crows with crow, not to mention the slow mo crow mo. Fantastic rhyming shooting there from Andy. And if you want to see more Chromo and you're watching this on YouTube, then click on the pigeon on the screen. We've got some Chromo of that too. Now, more cuckoo than crow. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. Right, uh, well, we seem to have a technical problem there. The reason I think being that um, Yes, I didn't send David any copy because while you're watching me here, I'm actually in China working on next week's programme. So let's get on to the next item, shall we? It is Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie, it's Igor again from Holland. We're at the Grüne Tagen in Apeldoorn. It's a beautiful fair. Only thing missing is a famous hunter. Hello Charlie, Chris Eppleston here with his mate Dylan Hello. in sunny Emily in West Yorkshire on the crows. Hello Charlie, this is Jeffrey from Apeldoorn from the Green Days and guess who I saw? Hello Charlie, Country Sports Cavern here. Had a great day shooting today when it was pissing rain. Not, nevertheless, got four Mike Pies. <coughs> and it's great, great, great to add now to the vermin count for the, for the Gun Club. Thanks for watching, good luck. Hello Charlie, today I'm in China and guess what? So are you. <laughs> Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Keep them coming. Now, 
animals can be creatures of habit, and that's what Roy's banking on outfoxing. <laughs> It's a critical time of year for Roy. His high-maintenance falcons and hawks have young and can't be disturbed. The peacocks are so preoccupied with love and shaking those tail feathers, they wouldn't know if a fox was sitting right behind them licking its lips. And that's a very real worry, as a Charlie is coming here every night between 10 o'clock and 10.30. The worrying part for me, that if a fox goes round at the moment, one, we've got all the peacocks nesting and obviously like pheasants and partridge, they're a ground nesting bird. But more importantly, and we're getting a serenade from the peacocks, they know what we're up to. More importantly, with the birds of prey, at the moment, again, is a very, very dangerous time to have a fox running around the garden because they're all sitting on eggs or sitting on young. And although the fox can't get into the aviaries, all the aviaries are fox proof, it's only got to start scratching at the doors, jump, in, jump on top, cause disturbance of an evening or into the night and then one of the birds could come off their eggs or come off their young and that will leave them completely unprotected from the weather and it's been getting bitterly cold still at night even though we're in June. Fingers crossed this fox will stick pretty much to the timings that we've seen it at so around about 10, 10 30. So we're going to head up there, it's coming on for about half past nine now, hopefully we won't have too long to wait. Because Roy is shooting down onto the fox he wants to make sure he's going to be hitting the right spot. Tony Hart, watch out. Yes. First of all, he needs to put some bait out in the optimum spot. It should be pick and mix and not Twix. And what we're going to use is a little bit of cat food. And that's purely and simply because it's in small pieces, small chunks. So the fox should just have a, a bit of a, a, um, a search about picking up the little bits. If you put a rabbit carcass or something like that out, then it's just as likely to pick that up and run off with it. So if we just scatter this about, then uh, hopefully it'll stay around long enough to give us a shot. On its evening prowl, the fox also hassles the magpies in the Larsen Trap. They are part of its routine. Foxes are opportunists. All it takes is a loose latch and the fox will be in like Flynn. It's a mistake that many poultry owners make. They don't think they have fox issues until it's too late. What the fox will do around his territory is he will go around and check all the likely food sources. So that's what he's doing with the magpies and with the birds at the moment. It, you just need to make one mistake, leave a door open, leave a door ajar, and the fox will uh, make hay whilst the sun's shining. Right, let's take the shot. Yeah, about an inch and a half low. So I'll just raise up a little bit from there, and we should be spot on. It's only 15 or so yards, but the easy ones are sometimes the ones that surprise. He's happy with the short range, but to cover all scenarios, Roy is setting up two rifles. Just to make sure that we've got belt and braces coverage because there's nothing worse than being set up and having a fox get away because it's just a little bit too far away and I don't really like taking shots too far with a 2-2 on foxes so I've brought the big rifle up as well we're just setting, setting it up with the Nightmaster torch on top like so because we've got a couple of big fields out to the left of the building and foxes very often hunt the rabbits just out in the paddocks here so if the fox does appear out there and it's too far for me to take with the 2-2 then we've got set up with this so we've got this 243 there and waiting we're all ready and we have our doubts that this is going to work do not fear roy is here 10 o'clock comes and so does our fox Don't you love it when the plan comes together? We'd literally been here no more than 10 minutes. Well, I suppose 10, 15 minutes with getting set up. And the magpies gave us a warning. I was looking out there, hadn't seen it. Magpies started chipping up. And sure enough, arrived on cue. We're just making its way into the cat food and presented a perfect headshot. Let's have a closer <sighs> inspection. There we go, superb. Let's see what we are. Oh, wow. That's not what I expected there. So uh, bearing in mind that is a tiny, tiny little fox, 
I thought that was going to be a vixen, but as you can see, it is most definitely a dog. So that's a really, really tiny little fella. But uh, there we go. There we go. So you can see there, there's the shot. Absolutely spot on in the top of the head. And as he came in, I just waited for him to look. And again, I took my time. He wasn't bothered. He hadn't heard us. I was just moving the rifle very slowly up onto the sandbag. I was just about to take the shot and he moved on. And then he looked up again. I put the crosshairs just above him because obviously where we tested it beforehand, we knew that it was shooting about an inch, inch and a half low. So I just put the crosshairs just on the top of his head and that just plonked in there absolutely perfectly. I'm so pleased that we've accounted for that one. And isn't it often the way, because we're away clearing up foxes for other people, we very often neglect what's on our doorstep. It's been one of the simplest foxing jobs ever. Dry, warm, and foxes coming on cue. It's soft foxing, but we love it. Next, we have top gun dog training tips for the indoors from our Skinner's gun dog experts. Even when you are indoors with a young dog, the training doesn't have to stop. Expert gun dog trainer Howard Kirby explains what you can do with a tennis ball and a bit of spit, even on a kitchen floor. What we're trying to do is by going indoors, you remove most of the distractions that a young gun dog uh, experiences. By getting him and rolling a tennis ball across your kitchen floor or in a stable or in a garage, somewhere indoors, you eliminate lots of the distractions. He's much likely, more likely to go straight out, pick up the ball and come straight back. What we're trying to uh, educate him to do, condition him to do, is when we say fetch, he goes straight out, picks the ball up, comes straight back to you and delivers it to hand. So by starting all that training in the classroom, you, you help to reduce the risk of it going wrong. So better than watching telly is start mucking about with your dog and the ball. Perfect. And if you're really good at it, you can watch EastEnders whilst playing with the dog all at the same time. So it's proper indoor training. It's really good. Now there was lots of reward involved with all this as well. You were, you were being very, very positive towards the dog when it did the right thing. Yes. So all good teachers, whether they're teaching human beings or animals, dogs in this case, they're setting up a positive classroom. Everybody thrives on positive training with the occasional blip where you get told that was bad. You need that occasionally. But if you go into a classroom where you're frightened, where you're always being told off, where you're always being told you're rubbish, if we do the exit poll, you've learned very little. So good gun dog trainers, and there's lots of them in this country, will produce a dog that's really confident about what it's doing, give it lots of praise. Howard runs Mullinscott Gun Dogs from Lane Shooting School near Andover in Hampshire. Visit mullinscott.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. Right now, last but not least, it is more from the world of hunting on YouTube, Hunting YouTube. And this week we're concentrating on great British guns and tackle. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. And this week we're looking at a history of the British gun and tackle trade through the eyes of YouTube. We begin at the beginning, and Joseph Manton, the Lincolnshire gunsmith who moved to London, was the doyen of the flintlock age. This is the Duke of York's Manton flintlock fowler from the National Firearms Museum in the United States. And it's on the NFM YouTube channel. Famous named gun makers to come out of Manton include Thomas Boss. Boss Guns is still going strong, and this video is from a sales meeting with potential buyers in Norway in 2008. Forgive the introduction, which is in Norwegian, unless of course you are Norwegian. Another gun maker from the Manton stable is James Purdy. There are some truly awful films about James Purdy and Sons on YouTube, mainly the ones paid for by the company itself. This is the least bad, you will be amazed to find out, because they only muddle over and unders with side-by-sides, get their driven game in a twist, and cram a widescreen film into a 4x3 format. It's it's no surprise that this film first went out on a satellite channel, Discovery. At least, it shows good scenes from the Purdy factory. Moving for our traditional mid-item break into the world of fishing, the great British tackle manufacturer Hardy Grays has a YouTube channel. This is its video of the Hardy Syntrix fly rod versus a barracuda in the Florida Keys. Meanwhile, the famous London tackle shop Farlows is now owned by Sportfish, which has a better YouTube channel. Here is fly fishing at Chalk Stream at Mayfly time, hints and tips. You join Alan Shepard and Jonathan Tomlinson 
on the pretty river Diva in Hampshire. Now, Manton, Purdy and Boss were all founded in the first quarter of the 19th century. The relative new kid on the St James's gun-making block was Holland and Holland, founded in 1835. And here's a film we made for Guns on Pegs TV, an insight into one of the world's best and most famous gun makers, where you meet managing director Daryl Greatrex as he talks through some of Holland's finest pieces of work and some of the stories behind them. No talk about the British gun trade is complete without mentioning the Birmingham trade. This is William Powell at the height of its brumminess when it was in Birmingham. We have made films about William Powell, but here is a classic TV programme from either the 1970s or the 1980s. It has now moved to Banbury in Oxfordshire, and you can argue that it makes better guns. Another great name from Birmingham is Webley and Scott, coincidentally one of our own sponsors. The last film in this series is a factory tour of Aguir y Aranzabal, the fine gun factory founded in 1917 near the north coast of Spain. Why Spanish, I hear you ask? Well, you'd have had to be living in a dark room for the last 60 years not to realise that most British guns are now made abroad. And AYA was the firm that originated this market with the help of the King brothers from Anglo-Saxon imports. The charming Edward King still runs the company. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube, or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week when we'll be coming to you from China with any luck. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down to the bottom of the page and pop your email address into our constant contact box. We will constantly contact you about our programme that's out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Fieldsports Britain. <laughs>